dying. It is a part of life, often the hardest part of life. So when we near the end and there is no hope of cure or recovery, should a physician be able to prescribe medicine to end our lives on our own terms? In its most recent survey, 72% of Americans said yes when they were asked by Gallup, almost three quarters. But that does not make it an easy decision or an easy process. Even in places where it's legal, it's still pretty uncommon. For instance, in DC, I pulled the numbers here. The most recent numbers, they come from 2018. The population in that year was 702,000, and there were four prescriptions written. In the end, two of the patients used their medicines to end their lives. Two of 700,000. And to be clear, nobody's advocating for rampant use of these medicines. But there is an effort underway to at least make it a choice if someone feels they want that option. And this strictly applies to terminal physical conditions, like if you have an unsurvivable malignant brain tumor that is giving you seizures and will end your life. It's not for something like Alzheimer's or severe depression. A very familiar voice, Diane Rehm, is speaking up now in a new book about this issue. It's called, When My Time Comes. The NPR legend talks with patients uh, doctors on both sides of the issue, ethicists and theologians. So I sat down with her to ask, why does she feel so strongly about this issue? Beginning with the deaths of her mother and her husband, and we finished by exploring an elusive question, what is a good death? Uh, my mother died at 49. I was 19. Uh, she was in great pain at the end of her life. She begged to die. But of course, back then, there were no such laws in place anywhere in the country. Now, there are nine states plus the District of Columbia, which do have medical aid in dying laws in place, and which do permit individuals who are deemed within six months of death to request medical aid in dying, at which point two physicians have to agree that that person is within six months. And that individual must be allowed to speak privately with the doctors to ensure that there is no pressure coming from anyone outside. And it's not a rash decision either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They must be of sound mind and must be able to self-administer the medication when they finally decide. Unfortunately, my husband's situation was different. He had Parkinson's disease he could no longer function in any way and was in a nursing home in Maryland. And finally, the only thing he could do was to starve himself to death, stop eating, drinking water, and taking medication. And it took 10 long days for him to die. Um, something that I watched, I watched the agony he went through. When a lot of us think of what has been termed assisted suicide in the past, we think of Dr. Kevorkian. We think of this guy who, you know, kind of turned into this villain to many people who was scary. And now we hear death with dignity and we hear medical aid in dying. And it feels like we're going to have to grapple with, what is this exactly? It is a method of choice. Dr. Kevorkian, I agree with you, went way too far, way too early, and indeed showed methods of dying so, so graphically that people were turned off, eventually he went to jail. The sad part was that that sort of set back the movement toward choice in dying. 
I think, for quite a while until Oregon finally passed its death with dignity laws. The ones now around the country in the other eight states and D.C. are all modeled on Oregon's law, which does permit a person to say, I am ready to go. I think something that's helpful in the book is demystifying the process because, you know, I think in a lot of our lay people's heads is like, um, you know, you know about lethal injections, uh, phenobarbital or something like that. Um, yet this has been a little more opaque. And on page 23, you quote a doctor who is describing the process briefly. Once I write that prescription, it's out of my hands in terms of what someone does with it. It is a faith. It's a trust. It's a culture of honesty that the patient will respect and protect the medication and use it as directed. The prescription is valid for one month. The medication is not in capsule or tablet form. It's a compounded liquid and has been described as tasting absolutely vile. I guess putting up another barrier to entry there of like, this is not something anyone would do quickly. Exactly. And one would not do without a great deal of consideration, which is why at the end of the filming and the end of the book, I spoke with my own grandson. I had him record me on his cell phone while the cameraman was recording the two of us, telling him what I want at the end of my life so that my daughter, who is a physician herself, my son, my husband, my grandchildren will all know exactly how strongly I feel about medical aid in dying and not wanting to extend my life simply for longevity's sake. If I am healthy at 90 and I want to go on, I will. Mm -hmm. All of us, we don't like to think about it, but we need to think about it as your book I think really aptly points out, um, we all will die. We all want a good death. You know, everyone wants to fall asleep in their bed, you know, when they're in their 80s or 90s. Not all of us will. If that's not the case, um, a good death is very personal. It's very subjective. Having done all these interviews, having talked to people all over the country, a good death, do you have any more of a handle on what that is? You know, even from the doctors and the priests with whom I talked, everyone had pretty much the same answer as I have, which is I'd like to perhaps have a group of friends, my family, everyone with me drinking a glass of champagne, enjoying themselves, talking about our lives together, and then at some point going off to my own bedroom with my husband, my children, my grandchildren, and getting into my bed and lying down and taking those drugs, if that's what's needed, mm -hmm. and going to sleep. Talking about death actually makes us think a whole lot about life. Doesn't it, though? Uh, Diane, I mean, you're continuing your tradition of bringing forward really difficult topics, but important topics, and I Thank appreciate you. you doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations so on the new much. book. Thank you. I asked Diane if she sees a federal law in our future, and she does not. She pointed out when she started this project in 2017, there were three states with laws on the books. And now, as she said, it's nine plus DC, and she predicts more death with dignity bills are gonna pass more quickly at the state level than we think. Her book, When My Time Comes, is on shelves now, and there is a documentary that she mentioned there in the works for next year.